Welcome back, everybody. It is January 25th, 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, 4 o'clock Central time. And uh, we're here today because, uh, well, it's it's Wednesday, which means it's Redness Day. And uh, we're going to talk about Al Capone. So welcome back. It's my vlog. Red, we met. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, very well. Excellent. So, you ready to talk about something we don't know anything about? We? You got a mouse in your pocket? <laughs> this guy is a legend. Did I ever tell you a story when I was down in Mexico City and I was at the Opera House? No. And I was on a tour. No. And afterwards, the Mexican guy that was on the tour with a young kid, it was very, very steep up in the balcony. On the way down, we had to be careful. On the way down, he turned around. He said, where are you all from? And he's asking where everybody's from. And I said, Chicago. And he says, oh, when you get back to Chicago, say hi to Al for me. <laughs> <laughs> I said I would, but he died in 1947. <laughs> you know, it's funny, but everybody associates gangs, mobsters with Chicago. I remember being on vacation when I was a kid and uh, standing there at, I don't know, where we at Walt Disney World or something in the people in line next to us and they were they were from i don't know for japan or something and and they said uh, just talking where are you from you know and my mom said chicago and they're like oh, oh the machine guns da, 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 da. you know it's just like oh my gosh that's what people associate it with though uh anyway welcome in everybody don chichio's here street story scott h uh bobby bag of donuts william kirchmeyer the krauts in the house we have julie mt dizzle dave malinsky uh, welcome everybody. Look and, uh, Larry Bulls Fox, and new member. Welcome in Homan Sanders. It's nice to see you. Everybody's here. Good. Uh, today is the, uh, death anniversary of Al Capone. Big Al Capone's death anniversary. Is that a word, death anniversary? It's a death, yeah, it's a death anniversary. You've never heard that before? Death anniversary? It's I've like heard it before. I've heard it before. Say it's an anniversary of somebody's death because an anniversary is supposed to be a good thing. So because it's the death and it's the anniversary of a the death, then it's a death anniversary. See where I'm going with that? Red? Yeah? Red doesn't like it, does he? Hit the like button, guys, if you're just coming in. Uh, here to talk about Big Al. He was born in 1899, Red. If he is alive today, he'd be 124 years old. He'd never make it. <laughs> Do you think he would have made it past COVID? <laughs> 124 years old right now. They found Al Capone's party boat recently. You may he have did. to turn your uh, volume down a bit. I'm getting I may echo. have to. Yeah, I'm getting an echo from you. Okay, so. Um, How's that? Let's see if I'm. Yeah, it's gone. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, it's gone. Kind of. So, 1899, that's the same year Mo Dalitz was born. And they're both on the East Coast. Like gangsters, you know. Okay. So, <clears throat> Benedict Mastriani, you share Al's birthday, January 17th. Nice. So, Big Al, he wasn't from Chicago, Red. Tell me about it. He was from New York. And at a very early age, 
he started working as a waiter or whatever you call it in different places, even brothels. And um, his notable scar that everybody talks about was yeah. not in a knife fight, but he insulted somebody's uh, sister. And just to let him know or let everybody else know that he insulted him, the guy took a straight razor and cut his face. Okay, so I heard that as well. And I made a video colorizing Al Capone, where I sat there and I colorized Al while talked about facts. Benedict Mastriani, thank you very much for the super sticker. Um, it's good to see you in the room today. Thank you, Benedict. So uh, the, the comments in the video after I posted that were that that's an inaccuracy, that that's not how he got his scar. Have you ever heard that that the, anything about that? That that's not really. I heard that. rumors that he got a scar in a knife fight, and then later on, I heard the rumors that from other people that were from New York, that uh -huh. you know historians, that it was actually done to insult him. They didn't want to kill him because of his boss, but they wanted to put him in his place. So, and there was no reprisals. He did not go after the guy. He didn't do anything else. So, so here's an article where uh, it claims that he used to say that he was uh, get the, he got those scars from uh, fighting in France in World War One. Yes, he he didn't want to admit that he insulted a young lady. Didn't want to admit that that's really how he got the right. How he got the the scar, huh? Well, he's only I mean, fourteen years old. Jeez. Um, yeah, no, that's so. All right, but I've heard I've heard that that he had to to. Um, I heard that he he that he's some something about insulting the sister, but I also heard that it was throughout his life. Capone would usually claim his scars were acquired fighting in France during World War One. He rarely owned up to the fact that his nickname came from a bar fight when a smaller man slashed his face for making rude comments to his sister yeah that's <laughs> bulls and bears i know you're yeah. right i know that already buddy capone was a teen yeah he you know he was working in those you said working in the brothels he was working in those brothels as a doorman as a bouncer right at 14. all right don chichio he knew somebody who knew him i believe that and uh, it was from the brother of the girl he insulted. Okay, we'll go with it. So that's, that's correct. John Cheech, you're right on it. Let's let's go with it, man. I'm I'm gonna stick to that story. So whoever whoever made that comment, I guess, was just uh, reading too much on the internet. Uh, he was hmm. working. For I got a kick out of RV Doc. RV Doc says the good old days. Yeah, didn't have medicine. People died of the plague or. or you know, different flus. It was crazy then. <laughs> RV Doc, good days, boys and girls. Good day. Um, <laughs> was there an Italian grocery store on the 115th Street near 5th District Station? Tony Johnson's asking. I have no idea. Does anybody know that? I don't either. Never heard no. of it. Yes. So, uh, Frank is the deceased bird. That got killed during the Cicero Wars. Galuccio was his name. A uh, guy who, uh, or is it Galuccio? Galuccio, I think. Galuccio, thinking this was the end of his life, tried to plead his case. I guess Capone, um, geez. Galuccio ran out of the Harvard Inn. At this point, Capone was rushed to Coney Island Hospital where he received 80 80 stitches 80 stitches that's how big this scar was how, how far across his face was this thing 80 stitches man that's hey, like all, all the way down all the way down. way down the side 80 stitches they gave him uh um, that was an old sicilian thing they used to use that to mark prostitutes that cheated people i mean okay. it was an insult it, it was Not a mark true. on you for your life it's a way to mark somebody before they had a GPS. Galuccio, knowing what he had done 
and who he'd done it to feared for his life. This came to a head when Frankie Yale demanded a meeting with both Capone and Galuccio at the Harvard Inn. Galuccio, the Harvard Inn, sitting them both down. Yale turned Capone's head to show Galuccio the scar, giant scar that would be tattooed on Capone forever, ultimately earning him the nickname Scarface. Galuc Galuccio, have we had anybody correct me on this yet? No, Not I must yet. Be right. Okay, so Galuccio... Somebody's going. Jesse, do uh, the name of the girl here. Um, Galuccio, thinking this was the end of his life, tried to plead his case. But Yale never had any intention of hurting or killing Galuccio. He was a businessman and simply wanted a profit from this unfortunate scenario. He ordered the Gallucci pay Capone $1,500 for his trouble, about $27,000 in today's money. In return, Capone had the promise never to retaliate. To top it off, Yale would lend Gallucci the uh, you know, top it off. Yale would lend Galluccio the money, making Galluccio indebted to Yale and earning interest to boot. So he put him on juice. Galluccio and Capone both agreed to this, and the matter was settled. Wow. Okay. So there's a, now we got the story. There it is. Galluccio. Thank you, Bobby Bag of Donuts. Galluccio. So, um, yeah, Al didn't have much to say, don't much to sway at that time. Yeah, would things think not. So he made it them a was probably what they would have called in Chicago, one of the young Turks. <laughs> yeah, there you He's go. Just working his way up. Um, Benedict Mastriani, scars near ears also was a, a for a squealer mark, to mark somebody who squealed. Yes. Wow. Damn. Last the earlobe. Telling you, man. I'm I'm telling you. Tarring and feathering people, slashing their faces, dumping hot oil on them from the castle. <laughs> they used to do that, by the way. Not That's only that, they used to heat up hot oil. You know, if they're making something hot in the kitchen and yeah. they got the beef, they take the, the hot oil and throw it on them. Oh my god, come on. Unbelievable. Um Adam, do a multi-state mob tour, Capone's Mansion in Florida. We, we already went there, Homer. <laughs> we, we went there last year. <laughs> We're not going there again. <laughs> um, sure would be fun, though, just to do it on, you know, on, on uh, uh, you know, my own dime, just to go around and, and see it all. It would be kind of fun. So, uh, one C, two C. Okay, one C is C. The double C is Chi. Galuccio, thank you. Uh, Don Chichio for pointing that out. See, it's not Don Cecio, it's Don Chichio because of the double C. Get it, Red? Bobby Bag of Donuts. Those, those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance fervor in a day. <laughs> oh, boy. Somebody got read off on a tangent somewhere here. Did Al have anything to do with the massacre at the Manning Hotel in Fox Lake? Red. Any idea? I never of that? heard of it. I never heard of it. No. That's worth Googling. Um, Fox Lake Massacre. Al Capone. I don't know if Al's involved. The Irish mob, it says, is the heading. Uh, mobsters from the Capone and uh, Drugan Lakes gangs were gunned down at Manning's Hotel in what came to be known as the Fox Lake Massacre. So, um, according to... According Joe to Collado Lake, says no. According to Lake County History blog spot, um, the Chano Lakes region became a notorious hangout for Prohibition gangsters. The likes of Al Capone and his gang could freely gamble and drink the nights away. Capone was related to have owned a summer house on Bluff Lake near Antioch and to frequent the Manola Hotel in Fox Lake. George Bugs Moran was also reported to have a home on Buff Lake. The reason behind the Fox Lake massacre is still debated. Many believe the hit was part of Chicago's beer wars and the control of the Chano Lakes region beer, uh, region beer distribution between Capone and Moran. 
I don't know. I'm saying it says that there is. Um, I don't know if it's directly pointing to. Yeah. Mario Gomes, Al Capone expert and webmaster of the encyclopedic My Al Capone Museum website, noted that Moran and his men had to constantly outthink and stay one step ahead of the Capone boys in order to survive. By the time of the Fox Lake Massacre, Moran was being squeezed out of his territories and his days as Chicagoland gangster were coming to an end. I didn't even know about the Fox Lake Massacre, what that was, was all I about. I never heard of it. I never heard of it. Jesse uh, Arabi, uh, probably making a bootleg. And yeah, Drugan Lake were allied with Capone. There was a lot of different things happening back then, the beginning of all of it, all different moving pieces and cogs and gears and this group and that gang and these guys. And everybody was, you know, um, yeah. You could tell. When Capone went to prison, the outfit moved away quickly from Capone. Yeah, they did. well. Yeah. Love well, it was, they all went in. <laughs> yeah, sure. You see how bad Capone looked when he got out of prison? Look at that. Yeah, show that picture. Yeah. Now, that's not the, you know, the chunky, uh, you know, High on the hog, Capone, you know, eating and drinking. No. This, is, this is not, I it's mean, not he the big mean, man, the big guy. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, yeah, he, he looks, he looks bad. Sorry, he looks bad. I hate to say it that way, but he just looks bad. Um, especially when you compare it to a photo like this one. Oops. Almost had it. List. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um, list details. Mm -hmm. Save. Download. Downloads. When he got out, he was a shell of a man. Yeah. I mean, didn't That's look why anything like him. They found out that he was no longer a harm or a danger to society. They deemed him that way anyway, right? Yeah. That's what it said on the prison report. I read that once. Wow. Yeah. Capone was a... Uh, I mean, you, you know, the, it's prohibition. That's what made all that damn money was the government going and, and cutting off everybody's, uh, you know, um, cutting off everybody's uh, alcohol, liquor supply. No beer, no alcohol. You know, you take that away and people are going to, you know, figure out how to still get it, make it themselves, you're going to smuggle it in, you're going to do whatever you can, I guess, huh? Syphilis will do that to you, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it even looks like he's got sores and stuff on his face in that picture. Uh, this doesn't look, this is doesn't interesting. Look. My father tells a story about hunting near Hayward, uh, near Hayward, back way back yes. in the seventies, and a lady at the bar claiming to be Capone's daughter. Yes, that's that's probably true. Is that that Deidre? Yes. There's there's a book. A review journal did an article about this. There is a book that this um, uh, historian, Deidre Marie Capone, and her grandfather was Ralph Capone, the older brother and business partner of Al. So she That's wrote a the book. one I met. He was out in Willow Springs, and he moved to Wisconsin and died so, there. He passed away there. So she's claiming that... When everything was going to hell in Chicago in the late 20s, Prohibition was coming to an end. They lobbied, Ralph and Al lobbied the lawmakers to legalize gambling, alcohol, and prostitution, saying, quote, if you legalize alcohol and gambling in Nevada, you'll have a gold mine. Ralph Capone opened the first upscale casino, the Paro Dice, Cl uh, Paro Dice Club, what is now on the strip about the same time 
she said, adding it was operated by an Italian couple. Now, this contradicts a lot of things. Uh, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Historians, though, say that, you know, it's probably unlikely the um, that it happened. But I tell you that that Paradise Nightclub was bought in 1939. I don't know who owned it and who it was purchased from. But Guy McAfee is the one who purchased it, and he turned it into Club 91, which he went on to open up the El Rancho, the um, Pioneer Club downtown, Mandalay Room, and uh, and finally the uh, Golden Nugget in 1940, uh, 1946, October of 1946, so it have been three right months. Right after the war. Yeah, three months before Bugsy opened the Flamingo. It's a comment. Cabone's brother still had some juice going back in the 70s. Ralph died in 1968, I believe, or 69. Deidre Capone also insists her grandfather, Ralph, was the first person to notify Siegel about Las Vegas' potential, Benny Siegel. I, you know, again, did, did all of that go on? Yeah. Folklore. Folklore. It, it, right. She's here. Deidre Capone uh, takes pride in her gangster ancestors. She maintains Al Capone had nothing to do with the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929, where several rivals of his gang, uh, several rivals of his gang <laughs> were gunned down in Chicago. Was he a, a true member guy? of the family? A true no. member of the family. Was, was he no, a he wasn't involved in it. <laughs> was he a monster? Yes, he was, she said. Was he a monster? No, he wasn't. Was he a villain? No, he was a victim. Italians at that point in our nation's history were the low man on the totem pole. Being a monster was the only way to make a living to support your family. Al and Ralph Capone were in the business of providing what people wanted. That's that's a descendant right there. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. But that's like that's like Frankie Foley, Frankie Foley, honey, um, Harry Elman's daughter. Yes. Harry was just a poor victim. I, well, I, you know, look, I met Millicent Siegel, Bugsy's daughter, got to have lunch with her 15 years ago. And she sat there and said to me, my father was a hotel businessman and a bad, bad <laughs> man killed him. Like, Okay, if that's what you got to go with, that's what you got to go with, you know. So, now this syphilis, Red, let's talk about this syphilis thing. How come they didn't know that, that Al had syphilis back then? I don't think he reported it. I mean, syphilis starts out with a, store, a sore on the genitals. And when he developed it, probably when he was 14, uh, he just didn't want to do anything about it. The second stage after that sore goes away is um, you get like prickly heat or a rash on your arms or some strange place on your body. And he probably just passed that off too. And when it gets to the tertiary stage, the third stage, uh, he probably just went through that too. And uh, so there's some things that were written that he tried sulfur drugs and they, they didn't work. But they did, at the Bureau of Prisons, they did give him some penicillin, but by that time he was gone. Hey, so you know a lot about the syphilis. How come that, how come that is, Brad? I think I know a lot about all diseases, venereal diseases especially. STD expert, huh? Yeah, well, not an expert, but you know, <laughs> you kind of were is around. Is discharge green or yellow? <laughs> Pardon? Is the discharge green or yellow? It's orange. I no no, hell that. I've never seen it. I've just heard about it. Okay. So um, he was also a heavy cocaine user. His nose was eaten up. Did you know that about Al Capone? Yes. I had no idea about that. Cocaine was legal then. Cocaine was legal then. Did, did you see that video? I, I hate to go. I hate to go here. Okay. But... Did you see that video of the guy from World War II sitting there rocking next to his generals and sergeants? He's tweeting yes. on death. 
Oh my God, man. People back in those days, they did all kinds of crazy. Um, I never heard that about him though. So John, Don Cheech has a, a point here. He, he wouldn't, wouldn't take, take the, the spinal tap test because, because he was afraid of the needles. Afraid of needles. Afraid of needles. But doesn't mind having sores down there, huh? No. Needle, man. Seriously. I'd take the needle. So it's just, <laughs> yeah. Scott H., not that I knew of. I did not know of anybody. I... That's it, Scott H., people coming into the store. Hey, Red, I got this thing. Red, let me see. Yeah, they want to advertise. Take a look. They stop at the, they the front counter, talk to somebody else, and then they walk up to me and say, hey, Red, did you know that I got this? <laughs> And on their way out, read a hand of a handy wipe, say, thanks for coming. Come again. <laughs> that joke never gets old, man. All right. Chronic smoke, cocaine, and meth were treated as a great discovery when they were first made. I'm certain they were. They're probably like, look at this stuff, man. This stuff. Mm. Find the picture of him leaving a funeral in Florida. That's the last known photo. Um, sure, let's grab it. There's let's a photo see. of him leaving Florida at the uh, at the uh, uh, mortuary in Florida. They yeah. put him in a casket, which is a temporary casket, till they got him to Chicago. See, in the back of a car. There he is in the back of a car. Um, the casket. Or... Yeah, I, you the know, the shipping I casket. Have... The shipping casket was wood. And just raw wood, and it was very plain and simple. Um, <laughs> shipping casket. Um, let me grab this overlay if I can. That's got to be it. Now, there. Don Cheech brings up a very good point that we spoke about. Did you see that movie, Capone? The last one they did. It's about the end of his life. Yeah, I did. Now, that guy on the right, that played out. him. Yeah. I did not like that guy's acting. I didn't like it at all. I had a hard time watching it. I thought this. the movie was a, not a B-grade movie, but a D-grade movie. <laughs> it wasn't good. It wasn't... I didn't like it, man. I, I'd rather... I, yeah. I didn't like the movie. The shuttle has a good point. I saw it yesterday for the first time. I didn't know they could do it, but they had a picture of him in his casket. Oh, really? Yeah. Here's the one that they everybody's no talking about. Then. This is him leaving the federal building in Miami. This is the one you guys wanted to see, right? That's the last picture taken of him that we know of. Unless we find the picture of him in the casket, which we can take a look for. Let's see, Al Capone. Um, yeah, there sure is. I'll be darned, man. Do you believe that's that? That's the one. That's the one that people are talking about. Well, that this definitely is the last picture then taken of him. I mean, you know, once you get to this point, I when mean, the you crowd really was grand. We didn't like it either. <laughs> Damn it, why isn't it showing up? Um, I'm trying to, to grab this picture for you guys. So, let's see if this did it. Jesse, you're right. Yeah. Here you go, guys. So, Al in his casket. This is the, the last picture of Al. It's got a rosary in his hand, too. You see that, Red? Yes, he does. A ro rosary in his now, hand. He had been dead. He had been dead when when that picture was taken. He had been dead close to two weeks because they had to take his body from the mortuary in Miami and mm -hmm. put it on a train to bring it to Chicago, and then they had put to him. prepare him for the funeral. Put him up on ice. Well, now uh, he's and he's buried in Chicago. I've been to his his grave. You know what the people do at his grave? They chip at his headstone. There's all these little pieces yes, of his they headstone. Want a piece of the rock. Yeah, what's the deal with that? Jesse Rabbi. 
Harrison Narcotics Tax Act of 1914 made cocaine illegal without a doctor's prescription. I'm sure Al had plenty of doctors. I'm sure he did. Oh, yeah. Michael Jackson had plenty of them. So did Elvis. So, yeah. Comments. Sorry, guys. I wasn't looking at the comments. I've been... Now, he, was, he wasn't first buried at Mount Olive. Mount John. Olive. He was buried someplace else and reinterned. Chronic Smoke, thank you for that super sticker, guy. Really appreciate you. Thank you, buddy. I'm glad, you're, glad you're enjoying the the uh, content today. So um, here I'm trying to start. Thanks for somebody. joining us. A uh, kissy cat. Why does the mob run to Florida? LOL. Yeah. Why does the mob run because to Florida? Because they love the weather. <laughs> the weather. Huh? Actually, Al Capone was a snowbird. He had a he had a home in Chicago. And he had a home in Miami on Pelican Island. Bobby Bag of Donuts. Robert De Niro didn't do too bad of a job of him playing him in the Untouchable movie. Um, the Untouchable movie. That, but that's all. That was all fictional, right? That was all made yeah, up. Yeah, that's with uh, Kevin Costner where he comes down yes. and he said, you know, yes. right, right, right. I didn't yeah. like that movie at all. It strayed away from reality. Um, I, I just, I got to back up cause I got to know what I was offered. I was offered both in Vegas last visit, right on the strip four times. Wow. Narcotics. I'm going to take it. It blew my wife's mind. We told Adam on the tour. He said, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I, I think I do remember you telling me that. And, uh, yeah, people sling that crap all around, man. In, in this town, it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. So when I was out by you, somebody, somebody, when I posted a picture, somebody on yeah. Facebook put a, on a comment below it. How was the booze and the blow? I was standing outside the Tuscany. I was standing outside the Tuscany waiting for a tour. And I just, I, I happened to look down and there's a bag, a little baggie on the ground with some white powder in it. And, uh, and I, I look at it and I'm like, I don't want to pick this thing up. But also, I don't want some kid to walk by either. You know what I mean? Pick it up. So I grab. I just security guard. I'm like, hey man. I'm like, you wanna, you know? And the old guy's like, uh, trying to get down to pick it up. I felt bad for him. I was like, here, you know. Sure. It's laying around on the ground out here. It's just yeah. Anyways, let's get back to Al. So uh, his tromping grounds was on the south side. And somebody earlier wrote that their family owned State Line Pizza. And State Line Pizza, by the way, is great. There it is. Yeah. Jim Yeager. Cousins owned State Line in Hammond. There's a tunnel that runs between that building and the building in Illinois. Rumor is that Al Capone would use the tunnel to escape from the cops. Yes, there were tunnels beneath, especially on State Line Road, going from the bars to houses. Lots underneath. Of because one yeah. side was Illinois and the other side was Indiana. That's right. And this was before federal federal police, before the, the feds existed. So so cops couldn't cross state lines. I always thought that was kind of bizarre. Like, you know what I mean? You're chasing somebody, they go over state line, you gotta stop. Oh, well, <laughs> guess we lost them. We'll just stay here. Do you think the cops over there are well, gonna mind? I didn't really want to catch him, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Bobby Bag of Donuts never liked cocaine. You just like the way it smelled. Yeah, there you go. That's why David right. Mob goes to Florida. The, the blow's a lot cheaper in Florida. The place is place in Cicero is still there. Um, You're yeah, right. anyway, it is so, cheaper in oh, Florida. There was a Cal City fire. Uh, there was a Cal City firefighter who had a house and had bought the house and discovered a tunnel entrance in the basement of the house had to seal it off. And yeah, it's crazy. That kind of stuff. Uh, kind well, of there stuff were happened. tunnels from the green mill on the North side, which belonged to uh, machine gun, Jack McGurn all the way across to the Aragon ballroom, all different yeah. places. So the You're, you you remember you remember them busting open uh uh Capone's uh, vault Geraldo going through all the walls to get what to the vault. 
Well, how could you bring up Al Capone and not talk about that? Seriously. <laughs> oh, we're going to go through this wall to get to the next wall, to get to the next wall, to get to the safe that has nothing inside. <laughs> Uh, Capone would go to Cal I'd City. I'd like to see the outtakes and the camera on that, you know? Yeah, right? Cap Capone would go to Cal City to see Phil B B B Bacino. That's got to be B Bacino. Um, yes, I believe that's correct. John's Pizza. I don't know, but he hung out with the guys in the Heights much more than he did the people on the north side. Oh yeah, he spent a long time on the south, south side in the Heights. South side was the tromping grounds. His, his whole, you know, it, it, it just was. Uh, Rick Charlton, Adam R. Little town had tunnels going to the working ladies' businesses. My great uncle told me lots of stories about ranchers coming to town. Women shopped men. Yes. Wow. Wow. Keep going, Rick. Hey, Cindy Workman, haven't seen you in a long time. How are you doing, Cindy? It's nice to see you today. Hi, Cindy. We figured that you've been working or, or you just haven't been able to watch live. Oh, hope you're doing well. Hope Burf is doing well. Uh, Gomp, 3602. Al had his uh, headquarters from Lexington Hotel near Chinatown to Cicero because the heat in Chicago got to be too much. Mm. Peter Faulkner, sure, thank you. Did. For the super sticker, um, Bill Crawley, it it better be for $276,000. Bill Crawley. <laughs> what? what are you guys doing? What's going on? As far as I know, his place is still in Cicero. Okay. So um, anyway, Thank you, I've Peter. Got, got five minutes before I have to be back at work. See, we knew it. You've been working, Cindy. That's good. Hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're having fun. <laughs> Great Scott, Geraldo and Capone's vault, the origin of clickbait. That's exactly what that was. That's that's how clickbait it started. It was, man. Yes, it was. And I was suckered There's, for it. I tuned in for it. There's rumors Capone hid in tunnels in Canada during Prohibition years. Russ Jackson. Um, That's what they were, rumors. Hidden tunnels in Canada. Well, yeah, if it could happen, I mean, the hell. These guys were all over the place. They're down there, all the way down into Arkansas, Al Capone. right? Didn't he have a, yes. a, uh, a joint down there? I don't know if he had a joint, but he used to go down for the vapors and the uh, hot, spring. uh, hot springs baths. The hot springs, yeah. Yeah, they even have, there's a... There's a statue. Somebody stole it recently, too, I read. There's a statue of uh, of Al Capone. It's, I guess it's a famous, it's in front of Capone's Loft in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And so uh, somebody, somebody stole the thing, I guess. They got it back, though. Anyway, it's a statue. There are statue. many pictures of it taken in Chicago Heights. Don. Oh, very Don true. Cheese. Many pictures of him taken in Chicago Heights because he spent a lot of time out there. Yeah. Tons. Yeah, tons. So that was, I mean, that was just, that was the place, though. That was the place. Like smoke. How does Geraldo still have a job? It's his mustache. <laughs> it's mustache. Oh, God, I want to say something, but I can't. Oh, it's too funny, but I can't say it. He, 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 Bobby Bag uh, Donuts, Capone hung out a lot in Cicero when they moved to Cicero from the Lexington Hotel. That's when he hung out there a lot. That's when he bought the town hotel. Oh, uh, Phil Bacino. Phil Bacino, he owned John's in Cal City. Um, John's was famous. John's was one of the last to go. That was a great place. That was a great restaurant, John's. Man, talk about little, like, neighborhood place that... Anyway. What's interesting about, about the Pond family is out of nine brothers, there were nine? Seven. One of them, one out of West, Seven. changed his name 
and fought prohibition. Well, wanted to, right? The oldest one wanted yeah. to be be a prohibition officer. Yeah. Um, the boys from the Heights brought him to hot springs. They would go there a few times a year. I guess it's good for the body. You get into these hot springs and it, uh, it you know, was. Opens it was very good. And we have them here up in Mariana. Speaking of, I'm supposed to be getting the hot tub uh, ready. I got to clean it out, get the chemicals in it. And, it looked uh, good when I was there. Yeah, well, I don't have it started up. I got to get it started up as well. It's still cold. <laughs> we can still use it. I'll get it started up. It'll be windy. I won't be able to go out and use it. Anyway, um, Geraldo, Geraldo likes reach arounds. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't Clinton from somewhere near Hot Springs? Yeah, Clinton was. He was from Hot so from from somewhere. Hey, Google, where was Bill Clinton from? Bill Clinton Not Hot Springs. Was... Hey, Google, where is Bill Clinton born? He was born in Hope. People also sometimes Hope? ask me, what president was born in Hope, yes. Arkansas? Hope, Arkansas. Hope. Did you hear the answer? No, thanks. Hope, Arkansas. Yeah. Um, had him farting in a wash tub full of warm water is not a hot tub experience. Yeah, explain that to my wife, okay? Because she seems to think that it is. So I make the bubbles. She enjoys the, you know, God, it's just nasty, man. I don't know if you guys come up with this crap. Bulls and bears. Al lived in Lexington up until he got arrested. Yeah, hit the like button, guys. If you're just coming in, be sure to hit the like buttons. Hot tubs make you unable to pronounce Italian names. Thanks, Rhonda Moretti. Um, I think that's how you say your name. <laughs> I was just in Tacopa, California, which is famous for the hot springs. Scott H., I hear they're good for you, really. Rick Charleston, I was Tacoma. born in a hot I wanted to be close to my mom. Huh? <laughs> Thanks for hitting the like button, guys. Gomp, my great grandfather used to bring oh, his. We haven't chicken seen you before. Fighting chickens to hot springs, lots of gambling and illicit activities back in the day. Yeah, they had cop fights, sir. Bobatize. Thanks for hitting the like button. Thanks for coming in and watching the show. Um, glad to see you here. Thank you very and, uh, much. First time I've seen the, uh, you, Bob. Content today. Yes, I really would like to get a, this picture to show to you guys, and I'm having a hard time grabbing it here. I don't know why. Sometimes it lets me grab them right away. Other times, I don't know, it doesn't. I got to figure that out. What the hell's going on? There it is. Okay, so this is what's in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Check this out. That's that's a statue of a Big Al sitting in a chair out in front of the Ohio Club, and. Uh, Wow. A lot of people sit down next to him and take uh, take pictures with him. I should get a statue like that, Red. No, I put it up in the van next to me on the passenger seat. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Big Al, next to the doing the tours, driving around. Oh, yeah, guys, the tours are up and going. If you're here in Las Vegas, be sure to uh, check them out. We have the Vegas Crime Tour. That's the newest tour that's uh, up and going. Vegas Crime Tour. A lot of fun. You hear about all it's the great. John Wayne Gacy, uh, O.J. Simpson. It's uh, pretty cool. And the Vegas Mob Tour is also uh, also cruising. So if you guys come to town, use the promo code MOBVLOG. It's at the bottom of the screen. Get 20% off. Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never before seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall Gang. This is how serious we thought he saw. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the driveway. Here's an offer you can't refuse. 
Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens. And then, VIP seating for the long-running hit, The Rat Pack is Back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was meant to be. And thanks That's a great tour for folks. You want to take it. Scott H., thanks for coming out and doing the crime tour. He was just on it. He can vouch. It's a great tour. It really is. Um, it's a lot of fun and uh, very historical. That's what I love about it. I can't get enough of history. So just love history. And that's, uh, you know, finding all the things that were. Anyway, it's Gary Jenkins did a show on Capone and the mob in Hot Springs. Yes, it was that. extensive. Very extensive. Mobbed Up Podcast. You're coming out here to Vegas. Be sure to do the mob tour. You come out. Love to meet you um, and have you uh, have you on the tour. Geraldo's real name was Jerry Rivers. Bobby Bag of Donuts says that it was Stunad. <laughs> <laughs> Stunad. Underrated Stunad. organized crime figure. Owen uh, Madden was big in New York and Oakland, Arkansas. Underrated organized crime group. Okay. What was the cost of the tour? Bill Crawley, the cost of the tour is $139.95 a person, but we give you that uh, promo code with the 20% off. Makes it right around $100. A um, little over Thank 100. you, Bill. Yeah, thank you very much. Chronic Smoke, that was a great commercial. Thanks, Chronic Smoke. I made it. It's uh took me a while to make, but I made it. And it was very creative. Very creative. Working on the crime tour right now, the crime tour commercial. So um so anyway, this um little rock looks like it'd be a cool place to visit. They say have a crime museum down there too in uh Arkansas, some kind yes, of yes, they museum. do. It's not very big, but I guess there's you know it's if you're passing through, why not stop and check it out? So, anybody uh, been there, uh, seen it? Tell us if it's uh, any good. If you, you know, have. I watched Gary's uh, series on it. He had a whole series on it. Gary Jenkins. You go down there, and make a video. And Did he, he went down there? He went down there and actually yeah. took uh, videos in the museum everywhere around there, and they were very informative. Very interesting. We should all meet up in Little Rock. I agree, Russ Jackson. Not me. Mop blog. Take a <laughs> It's a little chilly there. Uh, Rick Charlton, the tour is awesome. Even Adam's Evil Church tour is really awesome. Yeah, the Evil Church. Got to go on the mob tour to hear about the Evil Church. I talk about it. People, are, they they like it. Um, yeah, so, opened Madden controlled the town. So I guess we're talking about Hot Springs. Um, yes. Little Rock. So, yeah, Russ, ride some Harley. Sure thing, Russ. The only thing you're not going to see me on is a motorcycle or a four-wheeler. Last was on a four-wheeler. <laughs> yes, four wheel. I crashed on a three-wheeler when I was 18. I said, I'm never riding on one of these again. This is all unstable. Ten years later, I'm standing there looking at a four-wheeler, and I'm like, well, this one's got four wheels. I'll bet you I just a lot. Of no. No, two wheels, three <laughs> wheels, four wheels. No, not for me. Shit, guy's crazy. Uh, Bobby Bag of Donuts, basic Italian. Adam's last name would be Fiori, but in Sicilian, I think it's Churi or Suri. Churi, I, mean, I can't, unbelievable. Oh, uh, Michael Graham, with my luck, I'll come to Vegas, go on Adam's tour, and the tour bus will be carjacked. No, that's <laughs> not, not happening. Not happen. I promise you that's Adam not does, Adam's got security, man. <laughs> All right. True. Six wheels, William Kirchmayer. Perfect. Curry. Oh, it is. It's curry. Okay. So it's not cherry. It's curry. I thought so. Chudy. This could be a thing. Adam, this could be a thing. Hey, you know what's a thing? Here's the thing. We talked to Al Capone today. 
it's been fun. And Red and I, we're going to go talk. What are we talking about over there on your channel, Red? The corruption and how how corrupt, how the mob, how the outfit could not exist without corruption in Chicago. And if you guys aren't ready to hear about corruption in Chicago and how the mob wouldn't have existed, don't come to the uh, Red's channel. Go watch something else. But if you guys want to hear about corruption in Chicago, go to Red's channel. We're going to go talk about corruption. Hit the like button. If you haven't hit the like button, guys, it's been an awesome um, afternoon sitting here and uh, hanging out with you. Uh, there was a lot of you showed up to this, too. So thanks a lot for uh, for coming in and watching. Uh, and Red, I uh, will see you in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Okay, man. It's been fun. And I will uh, see you next time. Have a great day. Mob vlog.